Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Today we have sumac. This comes to us from friend Dan in Las Vegas. Today we're going to make a mushroom. Why not? I'm a fun guy. The piece is about 10 inches long, about four and a half inches in diameter. I mounted a drive center up in my chuck. I'm just going to find that center hole I punched. There we go. I'll bring up my tailstock and find that other punched hole. And I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure, give that drive center a chance to grip. Now one of the reasons I'm not a spindle turner is because it generally involves math and I'm actually pretty good at math. I simply don't like spending the time to figure stuff out. So I haven't really figured much out here what I'm going to do. I have an idea of what I want to do. First thing I'm going to do is cut a tenon on each end to fit into my large jaws. I'm going to use mostly bowl gouges simply because they're more comfortable in my hands. I, I just like the heft of a bowl gouge more than a spindle gouge. And I need to go sharpen one up. I'll do that. I'll get my mask and face shield on. Let's see how fast we can spin this piece. About 725 RPM. I won't be using that full 10 inch length. I left a little extra to uh, allow myself to not have to do the math. I'll just figure it out as I go. We're going to be turning at 725 RPM with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. I'm going to switch to a skew chisel to create the dovetail necessary for my chuck jaws. I think that's good. I've just switched over to my larger jaws and inserted the tenon into them. Now I just want to make a, a parting mark where the bottom of this is going to be. And I probably didn't say I'm actually making a box. This will be the lid up here, and this will be the, the stem of the mushroom down here, and it'll be cut off right here. So now I need to make a mark on where my lid will stop, and I kind of would like to make it a live edge lid. I'd like to leave some of this bark on there. This is real strange bark to work with. It's real flaky, and then again, it, it's not. It's real tough, real solid stuff. Solid and flaky, right. Well, that, that's just the way it is. I can't help it. So I know, I know rule of thirds. I know all about that. I don't like using it, but probably about here, huh? And of course the lid, the lid here, this portion will be shaped like a mushroom cap and this will be shaped like a stem of a mushroom. So let's work on that stem a little bit and I don't have a good idea of how to do that. Well, that's pretty. We want to have some sort of good size diameter so that when we hollow this out, we have a usable box. I want to deepen my parting cut here just to help me visualize it.
You know, I guess this wood is wet. Uh, I've, I've turned it before and I don't remember it being wet, but I guess it must have been. I'm going to work on the lid a little bit, like I said, just to help me visualize what it is I'm doing. I have to leave this part right here uh, so that my chuck jaws can set against this lip right here. But this will this will go all the way in once we get there. So I guess I have not cut enough away down here. You know, you got your mushroom cap. You want it to have a big a big overhang over the stem of the mushroom. It occurs to me I'm telling you how to turn a mushroom when I have zero idea how to turn a mushroom. So what I'm really telling you is my thought processes as, as I'm working through this. I'm not telling you anything. I'm sure you could turn a mushroom a whole lot better than I can. I'm just talking my way through it is all. Okay, there's our mushroom body. I don't know if it's done. And I don't know if we'll be able to leave this little bit of bark on here. I hope so. I, I think so. Actually looks pretty decent. Well, now I find myself at a crossroads. You know, I just don't do this kind of thing very often. Like, never. So, my idea here was to make a mushroom box. Make it look like a mushroom and, and make it be able to store something on the inside. What that something is, I have no idea. But the problem is, here's, here's the, the lid of the mushroom. And there's only about an inch overhang all the way around. This is the bottom of the stem. All of this is waste. This stays from here up. All of this is waste wherever we end up with at the top of the mushroom box, which will probably be up in here somewhere. This, this will all go away. So I don't know if that looks like a mushroom. I don't know if there's enough overhang. You know, usually when you're doing this kind of thing, it's, it's a whimsical look. This isn't all that whimsical. So the only other thing I can do is cut this down smaller, which will make the interior smaller able to hold less but it might look more like a mushroom or maybe maybe an inch overhang is enough I don't, I don't know I'm not done with this obviously what do you think talk to me make this smaller huh make it look like a mushroom and and the storage capacity is secondary I'm kind of thinking the same thing I don't know what it looks like this way you guys aren't loud enough I can't hear you make this smaller leave it smaller okay smaller it is Turning at about 1500 RPM. That look better? It does look better, doesn't it? It also revealed a little more grain in the piece and this cool knot. Yeah, okay, I can, uh, I can dig that, I think. Okay, we'll go with that. Now I'm going to drill it out. I've installed a 1 and 5 8 inch Forstner bit in my chuck in the tailstock here. I'm just going to spin the lathe up at about 300 RPM and drill that out. OK, 
Okay, time for sanding. I've mounted a dowel with a slot cut in it in my drill, and I've got a piece of uh, 220 grit sandpaper in there. And I'm just gonna go like this. And the lathe is gonna be spinning forward at about 300 RPM. So that's how I'll sand the inside, and I'll sand that up to 400. And then on the outside, uh, also starting at 220. So I'll do that up through 400, and I'll bring you back here in a bit, and we'll put some, uh, I don't know what kind of finish. We'll figure it out. See you in a bit. Okay, we're going with sanding sealer and shellac. So this is... Probably the only coat of sanding sealer. The piece is very, very smooth. Might require two. I'll let you know how that goes. And I've got some in the can here. And I'll just put that on the little bit of bark that we have with a brush. And I'll use the brush on the inside as well. I can't see in there any better than you can. So one or two coats of this and then two coats of shellac and then we'll start working on the lid and that's when I'll bring you back. See you in a bit. The bottom half of this mushroom box is finished as much as possible at this point so now I'm going to start working on the inside of the lid. I intend to recess this up in there some. Now I need to make a receptacle for the body of the piece to fit up in here and a lip around that as well. So I'm just kind of faking it here. I don't do a lot of boxes. Probably the first one in two years. So I'm just going to proceed and you can watch, okay? And that hum you hear is my heater. It's cold out here today. We're turning at uh, 1500 RPM with a half inch bowl gouge. Now I just want to mark out, I'll show you what for here. This is, I need to make a, a rim, well a, a recess for this rim to set into and then I need to make a recess for this to fit into. So I've raised up my tool rest so that I can use my dividers to mark how large the outer portion is, this portion. So now the outside of this line will accommodate this lip right here. And then we'll take care of that one in a minute. Now I'm going to readjust my dividers for the outside dimension of this opening, the outside part. So I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. It's just going to be a lot of stopping and checking and fitting and so I won't subject you to all that, but that's what I'll be doing.
Okay, I think uh, that'll do it. It's not going to fit like that. I can't stand boxes where you have to pick up the whole thing and pry the lid off. It's nice for wood turners to do that, but in use, you know, who wants to do that? You just want to pick the lid up and put in or take out whatever it is you're doing. Uh, but I do need it tight for now because we're going to do some more turning on, on the bottom. And we're going to do it with this in place. But I do need to go up in there a little bit deeper, so I'll work on that. I'll bring you back here in a few minutes when I get it so that it's deep enough and fitting properly and maybe I'll do some more work out here on this outer edge. Alright, I'm going to sand the bark with my Sandoflex uh, and I'll show you that. And then I'm going to sand the inside just with my 2 inch disc so I'll just go through the steps and I'll show you all that as soon as I get my mask on. That's going to do a real nice job on that bark, cleaning it up and smoothing it out. And then just holding a 2 inch 180 grit. And I don't want to sand inside here because I need that fit. I don't want to sand inside this rim, but I can sand here. So not much to it. That's what I'll be doing for a couple minutes and then we'll uh, put some finish or some sanding sealer on there. I'll be right back. Well that was quick and easy. We'll just get some sanding sealer on here. I'll brush it into the bark here in a minute. Well maybe I'll brush the whole thing. I, there's not much room to work. So I think this will probably only take one coat and then I'll put the shellac on. Two coats. Kind of fun to do something different for a change. Could have been more fun. I'll tell you about that at the end of the video, probably. It's been a tough, tough week or two here at Shady Acres. And like I said, I still have shaping to do on the top here, so I'm just doing the bark part. And that's it. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. It'll be a little bit shinier after I get the uh, shellac on. And then, as always, I like to come behind with the rag with fresh sanding sealer on it to wipe up any brush strokes or runs that might occur. So I'll bring you back here in a little bit after I've got the shellac on and we'll turn it around yet again and work on the top of the lid. See you in a bit. You hear my heater running, that's because it's 36 degrees out here today. So now it's time to chuck up the base again and start working on the lid. So what's important here is to get it back exactly the way that it was. You don't want to, just, just because it'll fit in here like this doesn't mean that's the way you want it. You want it just like it was. So you can see the markings on either side of this. Maybe you can see the markings, but you can see the definition. You can see it on all of them. That's where the jaws clamped on either side of that little strip right there. Well, this one I numbered two and three. So my jaws are numbered two and three. So I'm gonna put that between two and three and I'm gonna tighten it back up ever so lightly, ever so lightly, and then I'm going to rotate it in there and make sure that it's the jaw marks line up with the jaws themselves. And when I'm sure it's good, then I'm going to tighten them up right back where it was because we want this to spin as straight as possible, just like it was. Now again, this was not the right choice of wood for this particular piece because as I said, it's wet, probably about dry by now, but it was wet. So it may have gotten out around. Uh, it's pretty dang close. Yeah, I don't really see much vibration there. So now I need to fit the lid on. And just so you know, I'm gonna go into this a little more in depth in a little bit. Uh, this, this turning has taken almost a week and the reason is is because we lost power here so I couldn't turn I couldn't edit video I couldn't do anything and it was miserable we had a huge windstorm 70 mile an hour winds knocked out the power all over my little town here and this particular area where I live was the last to get the power back of course some people had it back in one day mine was four days so now 
I've made this to be a press fit because I want this piece to support this piece without any support on this end. Not right at this moment, but pretty soon. Now, did I make it enough of a press fit? Well, it runs true. It will have support right now as I work on this. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. So then we'll bring up the tailstock and it is lined up perfectly. And I'll apply some pressure and that'll help that joint in here hold together. And then we will start working on the lid. I'm gonna use a half inch bowl gouge. Let's see what kind of speed we can get here. We'll try about 1600 RPM mask and face shield on. Now there's nothing holding this lid on to the body except my pressure fit. And I don't know if I have enough confidence in that pressure fit to work without the tailstock. I don't want to just break it off. It might leave end grain there. What are we going to do? I'm going to turn the speed down just in case it won't hold. Okay, so it looks like a mushroom. That was the idea. So now it's time to sand it and finish it. Okay, I'm just gonna show you real quick. You've seen me sand, you've seen me put the finish on. I'm just gonna spin the piece in reverse at about 325. So I'm just gonna do that up through 400. I'll go ahead and put the sanding sealer on and then the shellac. And I'll bring you back when it's time to separate the bottom from the body. I apologize if I skipped ahead too much here. I didn't re really mean to. What I did is I parted this. This is the bottom of the base. Bottom of the base of the mushroom. I parted that off of the main piece here. This waste piece. And then I cut a groove in the face of that waste piece for my the lip of this base to fit up into and then I added a piece of paper towel to take up any slat. That appears to be running true. I'll just provide a little pressure just to keep those two pieces together up there. So I'll just uh, sand that up, get it signed, finished, and I'll be right back. So there we have it. One sumac mushroom in the books. Mushroom box. I did, uh, I did loosen up this fit just ever so slightly. So there's no play in it. It doesn't slide side to side. It doesn't wiggle around. But you can easily remove the lid and get it get out whatever it is you have in there. I love that X in the top. There's the bottom all finished up. I, I, I like it. It's not quite as whimsical as I thought I might do, but it's pretty cool. I hope you like it too. Thank you to Dan in Las Vegas for bringing this up to me for all to enjoy. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was going to tell you what's been going on. So, 
So I had the power outage for four days. I had to live in my motorhome because it has a generator. Then my furnace wouldn't come back on after the power came on. I, I couldn't get any heat in the house, so it was back to the motorhome. <laughs> then I finally got a repair guy out here, and then the fence out front fell apart, and I, you know, I just don't have enough time to do it myself. I'd rather do it myself. I put it up there in the first place, but uh, I just... There's just not enough time. There's just not enough time. And that brings me to what I want to tell you. I very well may not have a video next week. Today is Tuesday. I have to now edit this video and get it posted by Thursday. I've never missed a week since I started my channel. I've had one video a week for the last, I don't even know how long, three years, I guess, something like that, three and a half years maybe. And I don't want to miss, and I'll try not to miss, but I just might miss next week, and I might miss the week after. I've also got some family obligations that I've been taking care of, and more to come and uh, just life, you know, just life. So I'm probably disappointing myself more than you. I'm sure you can live without a fill video, but I just wanted you aware of it. Don't worry about me, everything's fine, I'm healthy. I'm getting my COVID shot on Thursday, right after this video goes live, if I can get it edited in time. So I'm just, just an update, just what's going on with me. Uh, there's more as well. So, have a great one. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, holy cow, how cool is that? Thank you so much for that. I truly appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome. I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil. Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.